sorry. Well, also coming out this week, as we have told you, is Falling from Grace, directed by and starring John Ta -da. Mellencamp. John Knucklehead Mellencamp. Congratulations. How, how does the movie, how does it feel like to have this movie done and, and behind you now? Does it feel good? Yeah, but I, I, that was two years ago. You remember when we first talked about, not two years ago, but, you know, a year ago in January. Uh, we saw each other, and I said, it's over. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Something else. At least, the, I mean, one of the things that's very distinctive about it is it doesn't have that kind of self-infatuation that a lot of like rock star directed type things did. You wanted to tell a story, and you and Larry McMurtry, the guy who wrote it, succeeded in doing so. Well, I never really felt like that. You know, having the camera on me was that fascinating anyway. You know, I mean, there's a couple of cute gals in there that are saying interesting things, and what could be better than that? You know, people talking about stuff that might interest someone. <laughs> God, can you imagine putting that in a movie? Well, what's the attraction of directing then for you in that regard? Well, no real attraction, actually. I mean, uh, uh, as you know, I kind of got the directing job by default. Nobody else really wanted to direct it, and for the money we were paying, I can't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a really small budget film, and the, the people that were interested were guys that uh, just really didn't understand the film. Uh, yeah. Jonathan Kaplan originally was going to direct the film, and he could have directed the film. Uh, but other than that, everybody else just kind of, it was kind of like this when I would talk to them. Well, you know me too, I'm be pretty hard to direct. <laughs> Go stand over here and, and make like a monkey. Okay, yeah, right. Well, let's see how you did. Here's a scene <laughs> from Falling from Grace. Do you know this is going to happen? Yes. How? Why? Because you didn't get enough when we were in high school. You left, but you didn't finish. So you're really just going to go out and have lunch with Alice right now? Well, I don't see why not. I like Alice a lot. One of the things I like best about her is the way she handles you. You're not going to say anything about the way you just handled me, are you? I imagine I'll listen to her talk about how moody you've been lately. How ambivalent you are about your music, stuff like that. Now, I just have to live with you full time. It's a lot different than a little frolic. A little frolic? And that's what this was, was a little frolic? Frolic's a frolic. Although, you know what they say. You never quite get over your first love. So anyway, that's that's you and Kay Lenz. We should, we should say what this movie's about. You're a country singer in this, right? Who goes back home and uh, things are not going exactly as he might have wanted. Well, Bud def definitely has a different agenda in his head than, than reality, which, you know, so many of us do. Well, at least one of us here. Exactly. Come on. <laughs> Some people I All may know. Us. People I may know. Uh, but he can't express what that agenda is, can he? That's one of the interesting things about the movie. He can't say what he wants. Well, because he's not really sure, because he's being pushed and shoved in so many directions. The thing that I thought was interesting about Bud Parks it was that, uh, that's different to me is that he really is kind of passive-aggressive in a way. You know, he reacts uh, to things that have happened to him as opposed to making things happen to him. You know, so... Uh, it's a, you know, it's a part that I think anybody that's a singer could understand, you know. And and I'm sure a part you can understand is that idea of going back home, kind of, or staying in your hometown, and yet having people regard you in ways very different from the way they did when you were growing up. Well, yeah, because it just happens overnight. You know, it just happens to anybody that, uh, you know, it's funny, I go home and people apologize to me sometimes about, well, I'm still at the, at the foundry, you know, and it's like, great. Had a job all this time, it's better than most. That's what I think. But of course, their, his attitude or her attitude is that, well, you know, you've gone out and seen the world, and, you know, it's my job. It's, you know, it's, matter of fact, it's the part of my job I don't really enjoy traveling, you know. But to them, you know, who get to, who very rarely get to go anyplace, it's kind of like a big deal to them. Well, congratulations with this. Good luck on all your jobs. Okay. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Mm. It's a whole love thing. Anyway, that does it for this week. Thanks to John and everybody for letting us hang out with him. Ah! We're in the hot spots of L.A., I'm told, next week, so you won't want to miss that. 
they let me in, right? Tell them about your motorcycle experience. I, this man put me on a motorcycle for the first time in my life and went, what, maybe... Five, it looked like he was mowing grass. Five, six miles an hour. I might do it again next week. You'll have to watch. <laughs> so until then, this is Chris Conley saying so long for now. We leave you with, well, you'll just have to see now, won't you? Thank <laughs> you.